Now going into 2020, um, we are confronted by not only a pervasive but a stubborn economic slowdown and emerging black swans, so to speak, popping up and threatening to disrupt the recovery process. Neha, the first question is to you. And, uh, you provide a lot of dry powder to India-focused funds. So how do you see the next few years in terms of, you know, your investment in those funds and those funds investing in companies and IFC directly investing in those companies? Do you see a conflict? There's no conflict. So first of all, I mean, if you look at IFC, our role in India is to provide not just commercial capital, but also developmental capital. So we were the first shareholders in HDFC Bank. We were the first shareholders of Bharti Airtel. So the history and the legacy goes back to those sort of organizations and we, we endeavor to create and, and build such long-term sustainable institutions in the country. Uh, and the two ways we try to do that is one, participate in the growth story of these companies directly, as well as partner with fund managers who we believe will provide this capital, this differentiated capital to companies across the early stage and the late stage uh, sort of uh, growth journey of companies. How do we see um, sort of the growth over the next uh, three to four years? If you look at the, the global sort of uh, scenario, uh, very few countries or very few regions are actually growing at uh, uh, anything more than 3-4% a uh, year, right? Global average is 3% and India is growing right now at 5% but if you look at the decadal sort of growth, uh, it is close to um, uh, 10%. We believe that if we look at a long enough period, India is going to grow, India is going to grow steadily. We will have these hiccups like what we are having right now or a political sort of uh, um, uh, sort of uh, what we had in 2012, 13, 14, where there were scams and there were various sort of uh, instances which bring down growth for maybe a year or two. But if you look at the long-term average, we believe that the growth is intact. Um, what investment trends do you see emerging over the next few years? Do, will we see, you know, for example, money going into, say, cutting-edge R&D? Uh, I think it's an interesting question because um, uh, as a country, uh, we have not really led the innovation landscape uh, because uh, when you take an R&D problem, it just takes many, many, many years to solve a problem. But if you talk about investment trends and where the investment trends in India are going, I've consistently said that um, even when we talk about consumer companies or consumer tech companies, I've always maintained that we need to have companies that are going to address the real needs of India. And we need to focus on the Bharat consumer and not just the India consumer, right? So I keep saying that we need to back companies that are solving the needs of the Bharat of India, not the India of Bharat. It's because most of the consumer tech companies that we have currently seen that have really scaled up in valuation but not really showing any monetization is trying to really target the 40 to 50 million people in India that really have the means to spend where convenience outdoes value. And there's only so much that you can scale those companies but if you look at the billion people outside of that, that have real difficult problems in India around education, around healthcare, that needs to be solved. Those are the most difficult problems that the entrepreneurs need to go and solve for. And we at General Atlantic have consistently tried to back those entrepreneurs. Do you see, you know, PE investors becoming managers also of companies? I mean, aren't the two very separate, different roles? A large part of, uh, you know, buyout investing is really also about managing companies, right? I always say when you do an investment that is only about 25% of our work done, the balance is all about building that company for over five years or you know, four, five, six, seven years, whatever it takes, and selling it right. In that horizon, if I you know, buy a company or I invest in a company and I behave like a mutual fund where I just sit and I maybe attend, mutual funds don't even do that, but maybe go for board meetings and that's about it, then what is the money that private equity is bringing to the table? What we would like to believe that private equity money is actually money that adds significant value to a company when we buy or invest in a company. It is differentiated capital, not commodity capital. And that is what you try to bring to the table by managing companies. Now, of course, when I say managing, like you rightly said, there's probably a fine line between am I becoming management 
or am I adding value in slivers of the company which is either you know, through very specific strategic initiatives, through operational improvement areas where actually we can bring some value to the table. I, I, and I don't think, in that, at least that's my personal belief, that most of me or the peers have gone and really interfered in day-to-day -day management in these companies. So over the you know, last few years, seemingly, a uh, lot of the momentum in the PE industry has been driven by ex excess liquidity in the system. You know, point is because of this excess liquidity we saw some binging and then some you know consequential indigestion uh, which is still playing out in some investments um, how do you see the macros adjusting and you know what do you see will drive pe activity in the next few years so look i think it's not just india i think across the globe we've had uh, a liquidity fueled asset pricing going on. It's just, it's nothing new, it's, it's true. And the belief in India is we've got this interesting growth cycle in place. Uh, yes, we may have a little bit of a slowing down of the growth right now, but even then, we've got large GDP growth behind us and possibly ahead of us. Whether that's in consumption, whether that's in infrastructure growth, whether that's in outsourcing, all of those pieces, each of those strategies, there is growth attached to India. Uh, you can debate the four, five, six percent, but it's still solid. If you couple that with the fact that there is cheap debt available, what ended up happening, not just in the last five years, that's been true for the last 20 years. You've got Indian families saying, listen, I'm gonna take on this debt and my earnings will grow into my debt, right? Uh, and look, I'll say, a significant amount of those companies do grow into their debt. Now that does not happen for a chunk of them, some lately more than others. Look, I believe we have possibly a slightly higher inflection in the amount of stressed and distressed companies today, but it's continuous. We will have, as, as companies and as the economy expands, you will have companies that do well and you will have a set of companies that fall by the side, which will become stressed. We've seen, you know, prolonged deal closures, taking, you know, deal closing, taking a lot of time, a lot of headbutting over corporate governance. Uh, how do you see the legal contours of, you know, PE deals changing over the next few years? When a document is signed, very often in India, that is the beginning of yet another negotiation, <laughs> right? So let's just say that the negotiation never stops. Uh, but in, in terms of deal making, uh, what we do see uh, nowadays is that there's clearly uh, far more uh, diligence that is being done. Uh, and I think one reason for that is that institutional memory and institutional experience on the private equity side has grown. You know, this industry today in India is about 20 years old and perhaps has gone through two or three cycles. Uh, and as you mentioned, there have been so many experiences, some really bad ones and some really good ones. But uh, for the professionals in this industry, uh, in many ways, what we see as advisors from our standpoint, in many ways it's a coming of age uh, for this industry in India. Because a lot of the experience in the past uh, on several deals that have happened is now being brought to bear on deals today. Going forward, uh, I, I do feel that, you know, uh, th there will be some sort of a segregation and perhaps you see that segregation already where uh, the buyout funds uh, with the sort of operational experience they have will focus more on, you know, just going out there and, and buying as many businesses which they think they can run. We've seen a lot of credit mishaps in the past two years. Do you see private equity firms really, you know, qualified to do credit? Look, at the end of the day, whether it's equity or debt, you're investing money, right? If you're doing equity, right, as Shweta said, the first, the most important thing is that how clean the company is, how do they get exit in five to seven years? In credit as against that, right, you effectively need to see whether 
that business per se will have the cash generation capacity to be able to get the money back. We've also discussed about how there is so much money chasing so many companies, right? So therefore, there's definitely a pressure to invest. But at the end of the day, the, f the only important thing, whether you're doing equity or credit, is to assess the repayment capability or an exit strategy for, ac for equity guys in a company. Now in India, you know, when you do credit, right, with due respect to all the investors here, but it's not necessary that you only look at the repayment capacity of the company, right? They talk about, if you're doing it in a private company, they think about, okay, will this company list and will there be liquidity? Or they think about whether there will be a sale or a secondary private equity exit wherein I can get my money, right? Uh, the credit is not necessarily always, historically, always been given on the back of the cash generation capacity of the company alone, be it banks or be it private equity, right? And I think that has been one of the issues. But I think generically, I think even the credit situation has significantly changed in India. Right? And the way people are investing, the way people are sort of putting in money, right? they are also looking at the capacity and the cash generation capacity. And therefore, if you look at the current situation, right, the only money in the market is equity. Yeah. Right? And that is a fallout of that. And therefore, people have become definitely more prudent now going forward. Right? They will be that much more careful about having the rights. And for an equity guy doing a buyout, right, you control the company. Yeah. As against that, credit, right, you only have access to certain security, which more often than not you can't monetize. Limited rights compared to equity, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. and you can't monetize those security, frankly. Yeah, I have absolutely. not seen a situation where you enforce security. Yeah.